This is a Wool Observatory podcast. Hello and welcome to Star Stuff. My name is Cody Halfmoon, and I'm sitting here today with one of my dearest friends over at Meteor Crater. Please introduce yourself. Your full official title. The full official yes. title. I'm Matthew Kent, and I'm the president and CEO of Meteor Crater and Meteor Crater Enterprises, which encompasses Meteor Crater, Planet Science, uh-huh. and the Meteor Crater Educational Foundation, and the Meteor Crater RV Park. That is so many things. It is. That's a lot of hats. I had a lot of hair when I started this job. <laughs> That's all the hats just started yeah. rubbing it off they over time. Look. Too many hats. <laughs> uh, so I feel like most of our audience would be fascinated to know about the Meteor Crater, which is, spoiler alert, we've talked about it a lot on our podcast already. But for those of you who are not as loyal and have not been listening to all of our podcasts, could you tell us what Meteor Crater is, where it is, and why it is one of the coolest things you'll ever see? Well, first of all, shame on you if you have not listened to all their podcasts. Rude. But with that aside, uh, Meteor Crater is the first proven and most pristine meteorite impact site Mm -hmm. on Earth. Uh, It happened 50,000 years ago. Big meteorite came from the east, uh, 150 meters across, 26,000 miles an hour, slammed into the earth in northern Arizona and created this incredible crater. And since it was only 50,000 years ago, that's pretty young for a crater. Mm -hmm. So it's in amazing condition. So it looks very much like it did when it first happened. And it's... um... There are some amazing facts, and I'm not going to get them correct, but I remember it's like you could fit the entire city of Chicago. No, was, there's not, a city. Not quite that the, big. I the don't... skyline, there's something. Yeah, downtown section, I think, of Chicago. Yes, just the, the downtown. downtown yeah. yeah, so the downtown, yeah. if you picture like the downtown skyline, you just like, boop, you put it right in the crater. Yeah. It's, I, I think the one that fascinates people is that you could play 20 football games on the bottom of the crater and put two million people around it. Oh my God! Like to watch. Ho- holding hands? Yeah, like no, just like in the stands. Like if the sides were bleachers. Oh my God! Two million people. That's a lot. That's, That's pretty big. A dumb amount of people. And I think a That's... lot of the things that that people commonly say when they first see it for the first time is, "Wow, I, I just didn't realize that it was this big." Yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot to take in. It it kind of reminds me of the Grand Canyon in a lot of ways, because when you go to the Grand Canyon, you're almost not expecting, your brain just kind of does the the glitches a little bit. And it's like, wait, there's no way it's that ginormous. I think when you see something like this, you realize it's too big to just be a natural, you know, hole. Uh, And it's not Mm -hmm. a canyon. It's not a long strolling canyon. It's just this very distinct shape and feature. Mm -hmm. So your mind realizes that nature was completely disrupted. Right. Uh, in that moment. Yeah. And and I think that's pretty awesome. I, I think people would get an awe effect mm-hmm. from that. And it affected a lot of the natural landscape. Yeah. I mean, it, first of all, it, it killed every living organism within a seven mile radius. That's somewhat of an effect. That's so, pretty... Yeah, I would say that... That's, imp- that's a impact. <laughs> impact. <laughs> yeah, it impacted it. Yeah, uh-huh. big time. And, and, and what it did to the earth uh, is a geological wonder. It took the earth and just yeah. flipped it inside out layers and layers and layers of earth. Uh, so so things you would normally find hundreds of feet down, mm-hmm. uh, you know, six, 700 feet are now up on the edge and, right. and on the surface. Uh, and that makes it a, a geological wonder that people come from all over the world to study. Yeah. And um, I know that there is a link to astronauts or there's an, I know that there's an astronaut suit in there because yes. I have looked at it Yes, with my own two eyes. Uh, we have a really cool space history, and and, um, and I think that makes us span over generations, the appeal, uh, because every astronaut that has been on the moon has trained at Meteor Crater. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the cool things, the space, a great spacesuit story is Buzz Aldrin, when he was training to go to the moon, and mm-hmm. that class of astronauts was training, uh, in the, in the training process, tore his suit. Uh, and they realized that if it had happened on the moon, they would die. Uh, that so happened at Meteor Crater. That happened at Meteor Crater. They tore the suit and went, whoa, 
We have to redesign this suit. So they did. So we get some credit for the modern spacesuit design. That's really, I had no idea. See? That's really cool. That's one of the great things about places like Meteor Crater is if you're not familiar with it, there's all these hidden gems of stories and wonder mm -hmm. and mystery and adventure that you get to just get into and learn. And you walk away feeling uh, a sense of wonder and a sense of, of knowledge uh, that um, these kinds of features and these kinds of attractions really have shaped our world and our culture and our life in many, many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, are these, um, I'm assuming it's not common just because I know how popular Meteor Crater is because it's local here to Flagstaff, but um, are they super common? Are they around? Well, there are 206 proven meteorite impact sites on Earth. Mm. Uh, and what makes uh, Meteor Crater different is because it is so young, it's in such great condition. It's over a mile across and over 550 feet deep. Uh, most of the craters that are out there are millions of years old. So that makes us kind of a baby crater, mm -hmm. but we're in such great shape. It makes it really uh, enjoyable to see and study. A lot of the other craters are grown in with vegetation. Uh, they're filled in with water. And in France, oh. there's even one that has a village in it. So really, yeah. I mean, just think about it. If you're back in Asteroid the medieval city. times, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you're going to build right a, a, a city or village and develop it, you're like, okay, I've got this cool big hole in the ground. It's like a, a built-in fortress, a moat. You know, yeah. they didn't know what it was at the time. They just thought it was this cool big hole in the ground. Aliens. Uh, but now you have this whole city inside of a, a proven crater. But and by the yeah. way, speaking of proven craters. The methods used back in 1966 through 69 to prove Meteor Crater was in fact an impact crater and not a volcanic crater are the methods that are still being used today to prove actual impact sites uh, around the world. So The methods used at here Meteor Crater. Yeah, the methods oh. they use, the compounds, the, um, uh, the different uh, tests they do uh, that were developed that proved Meteor Crater was an impact site mm -hmm. is now the standard. So that's, that's two. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. spacesuits. Spacesuits. Impact standards. And impact standards. Or meteorite right. standards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. So I'm curious, uh, why, like, I guess you personally, like, what is it about Meteor Crater that's exciting for you? Yeah, that's that's a that's a great question, and and actually, it's um, you know, it's personal, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, I'm at a point in my life that. Uh, you know, probably I have less days ahead of me than I have behind me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to retire in, a, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, wherever it is. Um, but to me, it's about stacking experiences together mm -hmm. and, and, and building chapters on your life story. So I had a chance to come out here four years ago and be someplace that I've never been, work in an industry that was new to me, uh, mm -hmm. and open up a whole world of science and wonder. Uh, and, you know, I think the message for me to share with anybody would be keep learning, keep growing, mm -hmm. you know, don't get content. If you're content, change everything mm -hmm. because it's wrong. Let's build those life experiences. I have learned so much about science, about Northern Arizona, about wonderful institutions like Lowell Observatory. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> I, I've heard of it. It's that? really cool place. I'll, I'll try place. it out. Uh, it is a cool place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a world that wasn't that open to me before. So I have really added this amazing chapter to my life. You were in the South before. I was in Florida. Yeah. I was in the hospitality industry. I, I managed hotels and resorts since I was 19, which was a long time ago. Uh, and that was cool. I love that career, man. I've mm -hmm. traveled all over the world, worked with great people, did some amazing things there. And um, But now it's like a genesis. It's like a whole bringing of experience in life from where it was just normal now. And I think it's really interesting because I uh, I traveled into Flagstaff the first time in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I stopped by Meteor Crater, of course, because I was here on a tourism trip. And you don't come through Flagstaff without seeing this crater. It's amazing. Uh, just keep saying that. Yes, Meteor Crater up in <laughs> just east of Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, so when I went, I remember, um, and you were there in 2018. Right? No. That was... That was before you, okay. That was PM, pre-MAT. Uh, Pre-MAT. So in, in, in the year of our Lord PM, um, <laughs> 2018, um, I went and uh, I remember, I mean, it was really cool just to see it in person. Um, I remember there was like a small gift shop in the front 
and there were binoculars. And even just then it was like, oh, this is so cool. And you go there today and it's, it's a different place. It's a completely different place. You have, I mean, the gift shop is huge and phenomenal, but not just that, but also the, um, the educational materials that you have, the, the museum type that you can walk through. And this is, this is what sticks out to me because obviously at Lowell, a huge part of our mission is education. It's not, you know, it's the experience, but the experience is there. They can see the crater. Yeah. And it's, wow, that's amazing. They can look through a telescope I, I, and have a moment that changes their life. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you're but, saying this because I got to be honest, when I got there four years ago, part of my mission was, and my commitment to our board of directors was uh, to add education. Yeah. Right? But also it's more than that. Is Meteor Crater was often thought of as just a place you stop wherever you go. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were, um, as we've talked about with some of this stuff, this is unique science. There's no place else on earth that offers all mm -hmm. of this and, and this. But nobody really knew that. It was kind of this reputation of like the world's largest ball of string. Let's just pull off and see the crater, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what we've really worked to do is flesh out that science and really put together a meaningful discovery center uh, and uh, a theater experience to teach people about the, the geology involved, about the impact science, the planetary studies, yeah. all of this which evolves around the sciences of meteor crater. Mm -hmm. um, and in the process, I think it makes it, I tell people all the time, I'm like, when was the last time you were at meteor crater? Oh, I was there five years ago or seven years. I'm like, go again. Been there yet. Yeah. yeah, go <laughs> again. We've changed it. It's different. There's more things going on yeah. and it's exciting. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really exciting. Yeah, we, I mean, we say the same thing because I mean, I think we've been through a similar genesis mm -hmm. here at Lowell. Yeah. Um, when I visited in 2018, I was a guest at Lowell. In fact, I came here four times. Yeah, <laughs> but see? I have obsessed with telescopes in space. Yeah. And um, they, you know, they rolled out a telescope. I had a great, you know, tour of the sky from an educator. I got to see the Clark Historic Telescope. It was great. Um, and now it's, it's a different place. We've got the Open Deck Observatory with all of the telescopes. We've got way more exhibits. The PCC, I mean, all of that yeah. is brand new. And it's like, I really like the the focus. And I right. think that's where you and I obviously align. But definitely that educational piece, because people go there expecting one thing. And then you get to blow their expectations away yeah. by changing their outlook, their worldview, um, and what's really exciting is for both of us, but today's, I want to talk about yours, is there's still more down there's the line so for that, more. but specifically for education. Yeah. Um, well, what we're, we're doing, foundation. Yeah, yeah, is we just formed the Meteor Crater Educational Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I, I often tell people, I'm like, you know, when you, you were a kid, everybody, all of us, when we were kids, right? You, you're, you're playing and you pick up rocks, right? And they're cool and you keep them. Oh, and I you take them home and you look at them, right? Or you oh, collected yeah. bugs, right? Or yeah. you uh, laid on your, your, your back in the grass and you looked up at the stars at night and said, wow, I, I wonder what's up there. What's Childlike going? wonder. Uh, that's a, a, a built-in sense of adventure for science mm -hmm. and, and, and knowledge and learning that we all have. Everybody has that. Uh, but at some point in life, we kind of lose touch with that, right? Mm -hmm. So now that we've made this push and we've gotten Meteor Crater to be a little more developed in terms of being a science facility, and we've really enhanced all these different areas of knowledge, now we want to bring it into the schools uh, mm -hmm. of Northern Arizona, and we want to get it out uh, globally and internationally uh, curriculum and take this unique, great science and pass it on to the next generation and the next generation and put them in touch so that maybe, maybe somewhere in there, there's one kid or two kids who still has that rock in their pocket mm -hmm. maybe, right? Or still likes to look at you know their telescope at home and they go, you know what? This is really cool. I can be a scientist. Mm -hmm. I want to be a scientist and I can do it. Yeah. Uh, so if we can light that path, right? Show them a way, mm -hmm. ignite that passion then that's, that's a success for me. So what you're telling me is we need to get you on the HR payroll because that is funding right. our future scientists. Because <laughs> we is. have And we actually have it science is. overlap there. We have we do. little presentations and the displays and stuff. But Well, you guys um, have been phenomenal that, to partner with in this oh. community from a science perspective. You've like, you're like, you know, as we get more and more of our science out there, you know, we're, we're linked with you and, oh, yeah. and, and that's good for us. And, uh, and what you guys do here is unbelievable. And the commitment, the dedication and the quality of the science is unmatched. Well, so we, it's great. and we have, you know, like 
Dr. Moskovitz and Dr. Kreta and everyone mm-hmm. who's looking into the field of like near Earth asteroids, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, um, were fueled by some excitement in mm-hmm. science. Yeah. That uh, and I, I another thing I love about something like Meteor Crater is it's making it accessible to people. Where a lot of times I feel like in the past to stumble upon a love of rocks or geology in any sort of real way, you just had to strike gold and have a good teacher. Yeah, absolutely. That, that inspired that and that took that passion and turned it into something actionable. And it's really hard to do that if you're in a school with low funding yeah. or if you're in a school that That's doesn't right. have the resources, like maybe the resources that you mm-hmm. want to provide. But if your family, when you're a kid, goes on this road trip, and they stop at a place like this or a science center like this. That can be their uh, their conduit to this in an ap- applicable way, which is really cool. There is fantastic science in northern Arizona. There just is. There's fantastic so much. Space. It's so much. It's and really weird. That's coming from is. NASA City. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Houston. Right? And this has so much science. It's It really does. Um, I, I, I think that makes it, you know, uh, a hidden gem, really, in the world of, of uh, astrotourism. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we are a fantastic destination. So uh, as we develop and, and Lowell develops and the Museum of Northern Arizona develops, it's just it's just going to bring more awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes a greater experience for our residents and our local people who live here that yeah. they have things they can go and do uh, when it's not necessarily the most agreeable weather sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's either boiling hot in the valley or it's nine feet of snow in Flagstaff. But... Um, you know, and I, I know that that's coming from my perspective because I know everyone else loves the Flagstaff, 60 degrees. That's ideal. Ooh, that's yeah. chilly for me, but yeah. it provides <laughs> well, night skies. I'm from Florida, it is a little chilly for me too, so. It's... I miss the humidity, but yeah. you can't see the stars well if it's very humid, I so. Know, but I thought I missed it too until I just went back for a visit and I felt like I stepped out of a hot shower. And it was oh, yeah. Want to get your hair all I, curly, right? Yeah, well, just this one right here. <laughs> That one curl. Just, just one right here, just <laughs> yeah, I uh, I try to remember that that makes for excellent stargazing because then you know you walk outside and it's a stupid, just a beautiful blanket of stars. Um, uh, but also, I wanted to mention because I mean we have the cool planet science and Lowell has a really cool spot that you gave yes, us and I'm really yes. excited about it. So I want to talk about it. Cause you're my science peeps. Yay. I had to give you a spot. Uh, planet science is, our, uh, is a store that we open downtown and, and we've talked about all this science and all the people that love science in Northern Arizona. And I realized they didn't have a place, you know, mm-hmm. we got, you know, lots of, of, of shops and stores and stuff, but I'm like, there's no real hub for people that are interested interested in science. So I'm like, what if I opened a store in downtown Flagstaff, right? That would As feature geology and astronomy and, and people could buy telescopes and buy calendars and buy silly t-shirts with aliens on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wanted to be more. So could I also do workshops and guest lectures and, and mm-hmm. host science excursions and things like that? Um, and I have found partners like Lowell that have been wonderful to work with on that. We just opened about a month and a half ago, and it's the response new. has been amazing. We've been, we, we, our business yeah. is way higher than we expected. But more importantly, the, the comments and the satisfaction and the engagement. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, I can't believe Flagstaff's never had this. We needed something like this so bad in Flagstaff. Mm-hmm. And it is very family-friendly. Like today I was in there. And these little kids are in the back. We have these tables where they can sit and do things, right? Yeah. And this girl's got like these color like things and she's stacking them and locking them together and building this thing. And I went, Teacher engineer. What are you building? And she went, I don't know. <laughs> and I hey, said, it's like you. You're like, oh, I want to do I this, said, but what if? <laughs> and I'm like, that's my favorite. That's, that's my, favorite. my favorite. Just keep on doing Just it. Just keep you know? doing it. Uh, yeah, But they I can love color that. pictures. And, and we tell people, look, if, even if you don't want to buy anything, that's that's okay. Yeah. Just come in, hang out, color, have some fun, mm-hmm. uh, learn about science, look through the mic. We got microscopes back your kids can look through and stuff. That's just fun. really a neat place. Yeah. And I, really and, fun. and I do really admire that because I identify with it is like, if you're putting something out there, um, for like a visitor or a guest or a customer or whatever, I like that addition of, and what if, mm-hmm. so I'm going to give you my best story about what planet science is about. Okay. I love your stories. 
I was in the store and there was a family of three, mom, dad, little boy, maybe seven years old. Um, and um, they were walking around looking and the little boy sees this kind of sphere thing that has stars on it. And he's like, oh my gosh, I saw somebody with that on TikTok. And that- I was like, cool. Uh, and I said, yeah, it's cool. You can want to hold He's like, Can I-? yeah. So he's holding, he's like, ooh, ah. And his parents are like, oh yeah, that's great. And, uh, and the mom looks at me and says, how much is it? So I look at the, the cashier and say, how much? And she said, it's $18. And the, and the whole family went like this. Oh. Mm. And the little boy was like, oh. And he hands it back to me. I'm like, come with me. So I grab him by the hand. We go over. And I take out $18 and I pay for it. And I gave it to him. And, she's, and of course, mom and dad are like, no, no, no. You don't have to do that. I said, it's not about the money. Right? Mm-hmm. Don't let him lose that passion for science. Mm-hmm. If he can come into the store and have that kind of wonder, then I want to keep him connected with it. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about, really. That's what we do. That's what you do. That's what mm-hmm. Lowell does, is keeping people connected to that love. Those rocks in the pocket, you know, mm-hmm. laying on that, in that grass. Mm-hmm. Let's not let them lose that. And, yeah. and we can do that. We can put them in. So I wasn't going to let him lose it over $18. And he went home with it. He, oh, yeah. And so that's our future astronomer. One that's of them. your future astronomer. I'm or, telling you. Or a future salesperson at Planet Science. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't steal him. <laughs> Look at this great product. Well, maybe he could work for me at Planet Science while he's going through school. Okay, before fair, he, fair. We'll come degree. to some negotiations later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Um, one thing I always, whenever I talk to the educators here who are giving tours through the telescopes, I'm always curious, like I ask them, like, what's your you know, favorite part of the job? Or like, do you have any cool stories of guests? Yeah. And I can't think of a time, other than it was like some crazy guest story, um, that it wasn't the kids who look through the mm-hmm. telescopes and have this like crazy reaction. I mean, sure. every time I've been to the Clark for like a media tour or something like that, and we're kind of waiting for the guests right. to finish their tour so we can do our shot. There's always a kid freaking out, just being like, oh, my God, I saw Saturn and yeah. I saw the rings. You saw, I mean, it's, and it's so cute. And you would think that that, and then everyone, everyone around is just like touched and they're just like, oh, my God, she's so yeah. cute. And then five minutes later, it's another kid who yeah. does the same thing. Exactly. And it's just like. I love that story. Oh, my heart. Every yeah. single time. Yeah. Um, in fact, we had a media crew up here and they were. Um, one of the, well, one kid just really wanted to talk to him. And so the parents were like, yeah, go ahead. Like you can talk to him. And this kid goes into, he's 12, maybe 12, 13. He goes into this huge conversation about Clyde Tombaugh and how, how old he was. And he's like, my sister wasn't doing anything when she turned that <laughs> age. And like, and if I, and he was like, and I still have a chance. And it was yeah. just like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry on yeah, TV. Yes. Yeah, um, right? and those moments, like you can't. Yeah. That's, but, and, and, but, you know, it, it doesn't have to just be kids either. That's the cool thing is because yeah. like I was saying before, I think it ignites the kid in all of us. I was on the elevator at Meteor Crater with this guy who was maybe in his thirties, you know, and had a backpack on, you know, and I said, so where are you from? And he said, Canada. And I said, oh, are you just coming through on vacation? He goes, nope, I came here to see Meteor Crater. Oh, wow. I said, you came what? all the way from Canada to see Meteor Crater? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I saw it in a textbook in high school. And, and and ever since then, I've been obsessed. It's like my bucket list thing, even though I'm young still. He goes, but I just finally said, forget it. Packed up my backpack, came to see Meteor Crater. Uh, and that's that fire in there, that wonder that, that, oh, that, wow. that we talk about with the kids. It yeah. kind of lives in all of us, doesn't it? I love that's that. That's amazing. How'd you get in those textbooks? <laughs> Besides, well, you know, like, being a really that. important geological yeah, world, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you, you pay a few people. Like yeah, that. right? Just a little nudging. <laughs> Crying, uh, begging. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I also, there is something else that I want to talk to you about before we run out of time. And I think it was um, related to this. And it was about a science festival that is more mm-hmm. local. Yeah. And I don't know how many of our listeners are locals, but I think it's really cool that you have this investment in science locally. And right. there's a, a science festival that happens in Flagstaff. And I know because we are always, we have, stuff here our after school programs mm-hmm. are here at Lowell and we go do some stuff for them and I actually didn't know that you were doing stuff for them this year you was sponsoring yeah yeah we're, we're a sponsor uh, for the science festival this year okay. uh, and we're gonna put together uh, an event that people will be able to come to planet science and, and and have and that's still in the works I really don't have any details yet but uh, you know with the opening of planet science and with our, our presence here 
Uh, we've gotten involved with a lot of local organizations. We also just... Yeah, DBA. Uh, you're part of the Downtown Business Alliance now. And yeah. we also are part of... A, we just became a member with a Creative Flagstaff also. Yeah. We're going to do something at ArtX, that big uh, festival this year as well. Awesome. Uh, and it just makes... I want... For me, as a, a, a... And we're a local business, just like a hardware store or something. We're family-owned mm-hmm. and operated. We don't get you know thousands and millions of tax dollars and philanthropy. We have to raise the money like a business it does uh, to mm-hmm. operate. And that's for all the maintenance, the security, the research, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we fund scholarships and do all this just through mm-hmm. being a private business. Mm-hmm. Uh, but more importantly, our employees live and work locally. And I want them to be proud of where they work. Mm-hmm. And I want them to go into their town and their community and see our logos and see our presence yeah. and know that they can probably say, I work for Meteor Crater or Planet Science and, and that we're a company behind the name. It's not S- just Street cred. We got it's like we got, cred, you're getting yeah. that street cred, yes. that local street cred. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think too it ties you in um, closer to the town as well. Like it gives yeah. you that that closer connection, sure. to, like geographically. I mean, you're in Flagstaff, you're right outside. It, but. it shortens that road. I mean, it's yeah. only a 40 minute drive out there, but it really shortens it mm-hmm. um, and makes people uh, inspired to come out because they they know who we are. They have a connection. It's, it, it's yeah. not just an attraction. So uh, was there anything else that was just super duper cool that I didn't ask about? Yes. Tell me about it. A $25 million expansion that is in the development stages. Mm, Tell me about this. It is the Behringer Space Museum. Uh, It's going to be located right off of our Astro Park area. Mm -hmm. It's like... 7,000 square feet, multi-level, uh, with uh, very modern, deep scientific exhibits. Cool things like a VR gallery where you can actually participate and go through the DART mission. Uh, a command center where we stream uh, um, uh, like a control room, all the B612 Foundation's uh, um, um, streams of, of asteroids and tracking asteroids and asteroid mm-hmm. tracking data and stuff so they can see where it's all coming from, what's going on. Uh, we're going to have a full life-size asteroid that you can literally take a bridge up to and walk through and when you go inside touch the inside and get videos and feel different temperatures and learn all about the composite makeup of asteroids Mm -hmm. so it's a really cool facility we'll have an area where we can change exhibits Uh, we're developing exhibits like a a a tribute to women in space uh, the space shuttle history uh mission to mars uh and this can rotate out so uh, that there's always something new and fresh going on there. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a very exciting thing. And, and one of the cooler things is we're going to have a big room, uh, a section you go into that's a complete moon diorama. Like you literally walked out onto the moon, like the surface. Uh, there's going to be a moon buggy. You can go in and simulate moon missions and do really cool stuff. I want to build go to here. And so, uh, so that's uh, in development. We're hoping to break ground in 2026. Nice. Uh, we're still in exhibit development at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but we're committed. Uh, the board of directors, the shareholders, everybody's on board with it, uh, and it's exciting. That's so now uh, that really takes our science to even another level, but it makes it modern and it makes it relevant and mm-hmm. it makes it fun. Yeah, it's got to be fun. Yeah, fun. And I love that you're including all of those like interactive bits. Yeah, it's a really lot of fun. tactical stuff. Things you touch and temperatures and noise and 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 pieces of meteorite. Uh, we're working on two really cool things. One is an app that you can look at the meteorite with and it just on your phone will come apart in layers and tell you all about each layer and stuff. Uh, and another thing you're is... You're doing an app? Oh, yeah. Buddy. Hey, here's the really you're cool, cool thing. You're cool. Really cool. All right, I'm... Should, should I? I'll, I'll tell you. Do it. You can. We're working it on an AI secret. program where we can actually have and feed in video and photographs of a famous astronaut, and you can actually walk up and have a conversation with him with AI and ask questions and get a selfie with him and things like that. What? Yeah, pretty cool. What? Pretty cool. This is, that's amazing. Huh? That's like I'm space excited. GPT. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. I'm going <laughs> to jump through the camera here because this is really cool that stuff. That is amazing. It is. It's amazing. And you know what? What makes it exciting is it's, it's media driven, but there's a lot of education. There's a lot of science. I mean, we really dig into to what meteorites are and, and how the moon uh, it, 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 you know, impacts our world and, and what our missions and the travel has mm-hmm. been like there. Uh, there's going to be a giant globe that you can touch 
uh, and and the oceans will evaporate, and you'll see all the meteorite impact sites all over oh, the world. Cool. And little videos will pop up about each meteorite site, and all kind of just really cool. That's amazing. I'm yeah. I'm just curious, like how much um, time are you adding to the experience? Have you? I that I, I think yet? people typically said spend two to three hours when you come to Meteor Crater. Mm-hmm. I think once we add this, and mm-hmm. I think it'll be very much like going to a, a, a theme park or an attraction. You'll spend half a day. There at least. When you have the cafe there and stuff now, so people yeah, can we like have the eat. Meteor Crater mm-hmm. Mining Company, so they get food. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you guys are just like, what? yeah, but you know what? It was awesome. time. You know, I mean, if you're going to hold on to all this unique science and not yeah. give a unique visitor experience, mm-hmm. what's the purpose, right? Yeah. But and then again, if you're going to do all of that and you don't pass it down to the next generation for education, mm-hmm. then you're 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 not you're you're doing it a disservice because that's the true legacy of science is passing it on. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, let's end with there because I can't think of a better sentence to end with that one. So I'll end with this one. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Thank you for, for coming having to Star Stuff. First of all, your podcast cool. is amazing. It's famous. I feel like I'm sitting here with a celebrity, you know, like Jane Pauly or oh, somebody. Uh, but no, you guys do a fantastic job. But Lowell has been terrific to work with. And, and uh, so we're grateful for the partnership. Thank you. Well, I mean, you guys are one of our. My, one of my closest friends, I admire you so much and Meteor Crater. And I mean, I just think our trajectories are, I'm really inspired by both of us. We should just pick. We should because like, we're, we're, we're taking an already like cool destination and making it even better. And making it's the true. Science and bringing all this yeah. great science out. So if you're a scientist, there's a lot of reason to come to this area. Mm-hmm. If you're just a tourist, there's a lot of reason to come to this mm-hmm. area. It's for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for listening. And right if on. you have any questions about Meter Crater, it's metercrater.com. Yes. Go to metercrater.com. They own that URL, so you know it's like the main one. So, That's it. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Thank you. This podcast was made possible by our members and donors. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our nonprofit in making more digital education like this available, go to lowell.edu slash donate. Thanks for listening.